The Sun is neither the brightest star in our galaxy, nor the largest, nor the one shrouded in the most mystery. However, it remains the most important star to us. Without the Sun, life on Earth could not exist. Hello everyone! Since ancient times, people have held the Sun in awe. They worshipped it, built temples in its honor, composed religious songs, and offered sacrifices. Welcome to our channel! In this video, we won't be talking about ancient beliefs, but rather how we set aside religious reverence and began researching the Sun using observational instruments. What exactly have we discovered? Are you curious? Then let's get started! The Eyes and Sunspots Investigating the Sun is extremely difficult. First of all, you should never look directly at it through a normal telescope. In astronomy circles, there's even a dark joke. You only get to observe the Sun through a telescope twice in your life, once with your right eye and once with your left. Moreover, most of the Sun's rays are blocked by Earth's atmosphere, so there's a lot of data we can only gather if we go into space. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. People have known for ages that the Sun is not some chariot of the gods. For example, Emperor Julian and other mystics of ancient Rome who championed Neoplatonism openly mocked those who took myths literally instead of seeing them as metaphors. Even if the ancient educated classes still held a somewhat naive image of the Sun, nobody doubted that it was a scorching celestial body. The ancient Greek philosopher Anaxagoras, for instance, wrote, The Sun is larger than the Peloponnese. In reality, there's no question it's huge. However, Anaxagoras likely had no idea just how enormous it truly was. The Sun is so large that even the entire Earth, never mind a small Greek peninsula, can't compare. It was also long known that the Sun has dark spots. Ancient Chinese texts already mention sunspots, and in 1128, a medieval English monk named John of Worcester successfully sketched them. Both he and the Chinese authors most likely observed the sun at sunrise or sunset, when it's relatively easier to view with the naked eye. Serious research on the sun began in the early 17th century, with two great Italian astronomers, Galileo Galilei and Benedetto Castelli. They positioned a telescope in front of a sheet of paper and examined the projected image. Even today, this remains the simplest method for observing the Sun and is still used by many amateur astronomers. Around the same time, around 1611, Christoph Scheiner in Germany invented the first helioscope. He realized that by replacing the standard glass in a normal telescope with colored or smoked glass, one could safely observe the Sun directly without harming one's health. Combustion and Emission For nearly three and a half centuries, the method of studying the Sun didn't change much from what Galileo, Castelli, and Shiner had done. It took time, but with helioscopes and calculations, scientists eventually obtained the most basic data, what you'd find in any modern astronomy textbook. For example, in 1672, the distance from the Earth to the Sun was calculated quite accurately for the first time, with an error margin of only about 10 million kilometers. In the early 19th century, scientists began examining the Sun's light across various spectra, leading Wollaston and Fraunhofer to discover absorption lines. Around the same period, they also found helium, a gas abundant in the Sun and in giant gas planets but scarce on Earth. In 1845, the very first successful photograph of the Sun was taken, clearly showing its sunspots. Scientists also spent many years debating how the Sun continues to burn. One early theory proposed that meteorites were constantly falling into it, keeping it hot. But that idea was quickly dismissed as too far-fetched. Then, in the mid-19th century, two great physicists, Lord Kelvin and Hermann von Helmholtz, put forward the theory that the Sun was heated by its own gravitational contraction. This hypothesis prevailed for nearly a century, but eventually it clashed with new data. 
According to this model, the Sun's estimated age was at almost 20 million years, but Darwin showed that some geological layers were at least 300 million years old. Ultimately, scientists arrived at the correct conclusion. The mechanism of generating heat through contraction does exist. A star begins to shine upon its birth, and planets gain their blazing cores by this very process. However, it has nothing to do with the Sun's luminosity or its actual burning. Like other stars, the Sun is burning through thermonuclear reactions in its core. This theory, proposed in the 1920s by Ernest Rutherford and refined by other researchers, is now the accepted explanation, regarded not as a mere hypothesis but as fact. Artificial Satellites and Probes by the mid-20th century, it was clear that observing from Earth alone had yielded nearly all we could learn with then-current technology. Fortunately, that was exactly when the space age began. With it, solar research entered a new era. The first probes designed explicitly to observe the Sun were the famous Pioneer 6 through 9 spacecraft. One of their main objectives was to study the solar wind, which was still poorly understood at the time. Pioneer 9 operated the longest, from 1968 to 1983. In the 1970s, the Helios probes and Skylab managed to approach as close as the perihelion of Mercury's orbit, successfully photographing the Sun at close range. These missions focused especially on the corona. The corona is the most mysterious region of the Sun's atmosphere, sometimes reaching temperatures of 20 million degrees, despite being extremely thin. Thanks to these probes, regions of the corona with the lowest temperature and density, called coronal holes, were discovered. Coronal holes form when various magnetic storms cause some of the Sun's plasma to be ejected into space, where it becomes part of the solar wind. Subsequent probes also continued to investigate the corona, but they all had a major limitation. Each one observed from the plane of the elliptic, making it difficult to study the Sun's polar regions. This obstacle was finally overcome by Ulysses, launched in 1990. Ulysses first swung by Jupiter for a gravity assist and then headed toward the Sun. It successfully examined the Sun from both poles, discovering many intriguing findings. For instance, it turned out that the Sun's magnetosphere is far more complex than previously imagined. Scientists also found that, for reasons yet unclear, the solar wind is weaker at the Sun's poles than it is around the equator. Several additional probes were launched after Ulysses, providing even more information about the solar corona. Unfortunately, many questions remain unsolved. For example, even though many of these missions targeted the corona, we still don't know why it's so incredibly hot. Some parts of the corona may actually be hotter than the Sun's core, which is thought to reach around 15 million degrees. Further investigation is needed to clarify these mysteries. That concludes today's video. Thank you all for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. The Sun still harbors many more mysteries. One such puzzle is known as the Faint Young Sun Paradox. By current calculations, the Sun's energy output back in the pre-Cambrian era seems too low to have supported liquid water on Earth. Since this issue is closely related to both the Sun and Earth, we'll dedicate a separate video to it. If you're interested, let us know and we'll make that video. Please subscribe to our channel and give us a like. And don't forget to share this video on social media. We really appreciate your support. It's time to say goodbye for now. We'll see you again soon. Farewell.